The Yolo Box Pro has been getting a bunch of amazing updates over the last couple of months. I want to take a moment to share some of my favorite updates that have been made to the Yolo Box Pro. The Yolo Box Pro has had a side-by-side -side view like this for a while now. And while this is already impressive, because not many other video switchers can do this, it wasn't quite exactly what I want. But in the 1.9 update from July, you now get more options for this layout. Let's take a look. If I go ahead and edit this side-by-side -side layout, I can shrink the video sources by dragging to the right, but now if I drag to the left, it'll actually start cropping in on one instead. So I can set it like this, and now we get this nice cropped view of my face, but the full width view of the other video source. This is really great for presentations when you might be sharing a presenter's slides into the Yolo box. You don't want to crop their slides, because of course you want to see everything on their screen, but you don't really care about what's behind the person. So we don't need the wasted space of all of the stuff around the edges. We want to zoom in and crop vertically on the person. So with this new side-by-side -side layout, you can actually do exactly this. And as you saw me set it up just a second ago, it's extremely easy to use. Another really fun thing in the version 3 update that just launched is that your multi-views like this can now have video backgrounds. So if you put videos on your SD card, you can now go into here, go to this video tab, and you can choose from a bunch of different videos that are on your SD card to use as the background. I'll go ahead and choose this one with the little neon animations. Choose that for the background. You can see it's a 20 second clip. And now it's showing me that it's playing in the background here. So when I click done and go back to the main view, check it out. The background is animated. Honestly, I'm impressed that it was this easy. So you can go to various stock photo websites to find backgrounds to use. This is Storyblocks. They're not sponsoring this video or anything, but this is the one that I use. And you can just scroll through their little set of background animations. There's a bunch of cool stuff in here. All you do is you just go ahead and download any of these. You can just get the MP4, a nice small video, download that and put it on the SD card, and then it'll pop up as one of the options in the Yolo box. This works with the side-by-side -side layout as well as with the news layouts, and you can have different video backgrounds in each. So this is a really great feature, and it'll make your live streams look even more professional. And by the way, you may have noticed that this cage for the Yolo box is actually now in teal, which is one of my favorite colors. And I've got a desktop version as well. These are the PK1 stand and cages for the Yolo Box Pro. We also have a desktop stand for the original Yolo Box and the Mini. These are part of the PK1 product line, which I started last year, originally designing A10 Mini stands, and we've expanded into the Yolo Box as well. I'll leave links to all these down below as well. For the rest of this year, we're running a special where you can get these stands and cages in custom colors. We have a bunch of colors to choose from, and you can get any of the current ATEM or Yolo Box stands or cages in any of these colors. On a totally different note, one of the most incredible features I think they've added is the ability to invite remote guests into your stream. Let's take a quick look at how this works because it really couldn't be simpler. First, you go over to the little icon with the people. Make sure you turn on the switch, allow participants to join. Then click on this invite guests and you can either type in people's email that you want YOLO Live to send an email to or press send link to me. We'll do that. It uses the email you have on file. And then once you go look at your email, you'll have an email from YOLO Live that says you were invited to join a live stream. Click on that and it opens up in a browser just like joining any online meeting. The guests can choose their camera. So I'll go ahead and choose this one, which has a video clip of me playing on it. And then they can type in their name. Clicking on join the event will join the event. The guest will see whatever is on the main screen of your YOLO box and they'll see their own thumbnail in the corner. Now back on the Yolo box, the remote guest appears as one of the video sources. So you can actually just switch to their feed if you want to show them full screen. Or you can also create a side-by-side -side layout with the guest and your local video. Let's go ahead and just edit this side-by-side -side view, reselect which sources are in it, and we'll have the guest as the big one and then me as the small one. And we can keep our fun background. Looks like I put them in the wrong order. So let's just switch them with that little switch. And now I've got this layout where I can see my live video small on the left and the remote guest is joined on the right from their browser. And again, you can switch between local sources, remote sources, or mixing them with a side-by-side -side view to really get amazing productions with remote guests. There've been a couple of minor updates to some of the graphics tools, which I think are actually really useful. One of them is the countdown timer feature. The Yolo Box has had a built-in countdown timer for a while, but what's new is that you can now add your own custom background music to the timer. So put a music file on the SD card, and then you can actually go, when you are creating the timer, you can actually choose the countdown music you want to use from files on the SD card. I have a three-minute 
clip I made of, of my music that I use for the countdown, and I'll set the timer to three minutes, and that way the timer will end right when the music does. Another really useful thing is that any of the graphics overlays you've created, you can now set them to auto hide after a certain amount of time. So here I have one for my YouTube and my Instagram. So if I just tap on the Instagram one, then it'll take 10 seconds. It'll be counting down for 10 seconds. And eventually it will just hide itself automatically. So I don't have to worry about having my hand ready to hide it or worry about it getting stuck on the screen for too long. One other minor feature that's actually really important is over in the settings tab, you have a new option for local videos play mode. This is about playing back SD card videos. It used to be that SD card videos would always loop at the end and go back to the beginning and keep playing, which actually made it really awkward to use for things like intros or even just playing back video clips on the stream. So you'd have to very carefully time it to make sure that you don't loop back. Now you can have the video just stop at the last frame. So I'm just going to leave that on all the time. Let's go ahead and do that. And now when I go add a video source, if I go add a local video clip, let's just grab one of my drone videos, let's say from Hawaii. Shows me how long the video clip is with a little one minute 14. But now when it plays, once it reaches the end, it'll just stop. I still have to manually switch back to the main source after it's done, but at least I won't risk having it loop back automatically. And lastly, maybe one of the most important updates is that all of your work of setting up all your video sources and your custom backgrounds is actually now saved when you leave the live stream. I've now done all this work of setting up my side by side views, my news layouts, loading in an SD card video. And it used to be the case that if I left this screen for whatever reason, for example, if I had to go and connect to a different Wi Fi, leaving this would previously clear everything out. Let's try it now. I'll go out of there, I'll come back. And look at that, it's reloaded all of my sources. It's recreated the side by side layout. It's kept my little animations, it's kept the news layout, and it's all there ready for me to use. And this is a super welcome addition because this is going to save a ton of time. I like to have these things set up and I use mostly the same layouts when I'm doing productions with this. So now I can just have them created and they'll just always be ready. If you're curious about the other features that launched in the Yolo Box 3 update, I'll leave a link down below to a video I did on the Yolo Live channel talking about all the new features in the update. There are also videos on the Yolo Live channel with information about all the previous updates. What is your favorite new feature in the Yolo Box Pro? I'm really curious to hear, so let me know down in the comments. Well, I hope this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.